Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? My name is Saris, welcome back to my channel. And I wanted to react to more Bill Burr. And uh, so we're gonna start with Bill Burr, Black Friend, Clothes and Harlem. I've seen this bit, I've seen it a few times and I think it's absolutely terrific, it's brilliant, it's funny and it's timeless. It's one of those clips I can go back to and watch it and still have a good laugh with it. That's why I thought I should do this and start with that. So without any delays, let's get to Bill Burr, Black Friend, Clothes, and Harlem. Here we go. Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. And uh, I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I got to, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. Oh, I need to update it's my like wardrobe as well. every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. All brand new shit. So when I show up, with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed oh, the shit, it. right? <laughs> I ironed it, right? It's there. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> they just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking... I've been called out a couple of times. Pairs of sneakers. <laughs> Ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. Never worn a hat. And I don't understand the obsession with shoes. Like I really don't. I've got four pairs. That's it. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Yeah, I do God that. I do you space wear the same out. shirt within a 10 day period, one of them's gonna notice. Why is it coming All of a sudden up? just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last two. Kissed it. <laughs> and the whole time like, oh shit. <laughs> then everybody just starts making fun of you. Like I said, clothes. I've been called out. <laughs> First they do the math, like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five <laughs> shirts. <laughs> he got five shirts. Oh, good cut. They start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirt. I think that's what everybody, why you need to wear a t-shirt at home? I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what, that's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. How many comedians no, like can do this? I was a white dude from like the suburbs, you know what I mean? Had no frame of reference, you know? My only frame of reference with black people was like those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? <laughs> Throw the fucking LA riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos, look, he's got a nice car, he's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after oh. 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. True that. 100%. No. I think anyone with dirty sneakers is just nah, bro. The dude's fucked. That's fuck. the last shit that they're going to let go. The immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's going to happen. Dude, you got anger issue. Attention. I don't think anybody's coming, coming at you. He really does have anger issues. I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First That's time we his hung wife, out, Nia, isn't it? Like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. So shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning, and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, hey, huh, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> You this would almost crack me up. I don't know why. It's just so funny. 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit. Like, dude, where all the cats go? How come there's no taxis up here? <laughs> dude, what's a bodega? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so oh, I pray to God man. she's going to tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing <laughs> over the horizon, you know? 
She goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> well, you don't Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. <laughs> Be surrounded on all four sides. I, can't I knew it was coming. <laughs> Sorry, if I'm ready. I just love so, it. At this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know. Oh. And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know. She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet and look up Adam Clayton. <laughs> did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? I did that as well. I didn't look up. Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton is. <laughs> I did look up Adam Clayton. <laughs> so at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? All of us listen to your dick. <laughs> Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. Oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some <laughs> shit, right? I don't even know where the hell I'm at. When I see the street, I wanna go up. I wanna go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building, but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I wanna walk by. So I'm like, fuck! Yeah. <laughs> was on like some reality show at that point like some sort of like white guy survivor he was ridiculous <laughs> so i'm thinking i gotta walk right by these guys right you know what's funny i think that they were actually more surprised to see me than i was scared you know and i was really really scared you know but i'm also really really white you know like shockingly caucasian you can laugh at the room and don't for me, <laughs> can, like surprise you Especially if you live up there, you've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical, like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I felt like I should have like a little pot of gold, like a rainbow behind me, top of the morning to you, latte. Kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax. Sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But, you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes got to go through the same shit, though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, <laughs> right? Just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. You probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2 to raise up. Dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass. I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming oh. out. So, that was Bill Burr, Black Friends, Clothes, and Harlem. Oh, it's like I said, it cracks me up every time. It's so funny. And what a brilliant storyteller as well. Like, how many comedians can start up a joke saying, Oh, I'm gonna get rid of some some of my black friends. How many people can start a joke that way and make you laugh throughout the whole video? It's just brilliant. Absolutely love it. And uh Oh damn, that was brilliant. I I love it so much. I'm gonna have to do more Bilbo. I'm going to uh, do a couple of more videos today and they should be uploaded sometime tomorrow. So keep an eye on for that and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If you did, like, subscribe, share and comment. I'll see you guys in the next video.